Today, we're going to be talking about retail stocks. Earnings are in. We had some winners. We had some losers. Where do we go from here? How does this affect the economy going forward? Let's talk about it. Welcome back, everyone. Don, Thomas, and Chris, back to you uh, from MarketBeat. Today, we're going to be talking shopping. Uh, I mean, retail. Uh, we've talked extensively, guys, about this uh, correlation between mm -hmm. retail stocks and the recovery of the market in general. Uh, earnings were flowing in from, from retail all this past week. Oh, there'll be a few more reporting next week. Um, from what I've read, what you guys have written, it's not all been great news, guys. Am I right here? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's my take. Um, there have been a lot of outperformance in the sector, but a lot of the performance is spotty. Um, there's definitely evidence of consumers shifting their habits. That's clearly seen in the results. Um, <clears throat> shifting from big ticket items to smaller ticket items and from discretionary items into everyday things and health and beauty. Um, you know, the, the retail sales data from this week was kind of mixed. It showed that spending was up, but actually not enough to offset inflation. So there is also demand structure there. Um, I think that we're really at a turning point for the retail sector and, and it could get worse later in the year. A lot of the guidance wasn't really awesome. Guys, I've always looked at, and Chris, I'll let you get to yours in just a second here, but I've always looked at retail as kind of a, a bellwether, if you will, mm -hmm. of the sector uh, for how the market is going to do in general. Um, yeah. Frankly, if, if, if retail numbers were coming out solid uh, this last quarter and everybody was happy, with exception of Walmart, I guess they had a pretty good quarter, uh, the market would be wouldn't be down like it is right now. It it you know everybody would be positive and thinking, oh my goodness, the recovery's underway. Uh, they wouldn't even be talking about a soft landing. They'd be talking about we're back. Um, mm -hmm. And and they're not. Uh, Chris, what do you what do you got to say about that? What do you have to say about that? Oh, well, you know, we talked last week, um, and I thought the numbers would be flat to slightly better, and that's mm -hmm. about what we've seen. It's hard to explain why that is. I mean, inflation is still going up. I mean, three a three percent, you know, number is right. still means inflation is going up. It's just going up at a slower rate. Sure. Um, last year, I I was on the podcast with Kate, and I quoted someone who said, "If you were making a hundred thousand dollars, you were managing through inflation." It was not comfortable but you were managing through but if you were making around fifty thousand dollars or less you were getting crushed and mm -hmm. and that was last year and mm -hmm. i think that we're 12 months into this or more and mm -hmm. i think there's a lot of people who are earning a hundred thousand dollars or more who are starting to feel that crush a little bit more i mean they're you're starting to hear now people are really cutting back even when they're making you know higher incomes you know sure. uh i i don't know yeah, I do the shopping in my house and I go to a big box store that's privately owned, but it's a competitor of Walmart and Target. It's a regional company. Mm -hmm. You know, are prices necessarily going up? Not for everything, but they're not going down. You know, and and I it, it just you you get to that point where you just there's a lot of reasons for it, and none of them really come to a good conclusion. You know, if, if consumers are actually making more money, that's great. But then aren't we looking at the wage price spiral thing? Yes. If consumers are working two jobs, okay, that has its own bad drawbacks, but it's the least bad option, I guess. But then you look at data that's showing people are relying on credit cards. They're taking out payday loans to pay for essentials. I mean, I, I'm generally an optimist on, but... Yeah. This just, you know, the consumer's been used to low interest rates for a long time and stimulus spending to prop up the economy, and they may be in for a rude awakening this time. I think, I right. think you're right. You hit the nail on the head right there, Chris. Just let me say this, Thomas, and I'll get back with you. Um, what I'm seeing, according to what we're reporting on, on marketbeat.com, uh, we invite sure. everybody to go take a look at it. Some of the uh, lower priced stores, if you will, uh, the TJ Maxx, the Ross stores, um, their numbers are doing actually pretty good and should do yeah. better. It's like the dollar stores. I mean, mm -hmm. the bottom line is you just said it. 
you know, if people are making more money, that's great. Well, it is until the money's worth less. And that's kind right. of where we are right now is, is my $20 doesn't go as far at the grocery store as it did or at, uh, at Target or any of the other stores. Thomas, do you agree with that? Oh, totally. I mean, today your dollar is worth like 85, 83 cents compared to two years ago. I mean, inflation feels like 43 cents, Thomas. I'm sorry. What? It It feels like 43 43 cents. Yeah, right. Sometimes it does. But, you know, speaking to what Chris was talking about, you know, consumers are at this rude awakening. And we were talking ourselves earlier about how we've all been kind of pulling back throughout the year and pulling back more and pulling back more and still not making headway. You know the data within the within the the retail numbers. Consumers are definitely shifting away from discretionary to non discretionary, and from yes. big to small ticket items. All right, so inflation's still rising, prices are still rising, rates are still going to go up. It's going to become tougher and tougher over the next few months for consumers to shop. So they've already pulled back on discretionary items, and we know that the retail sales figures are only being supported by inflation. Demand destruction is there. If we start pulling back on non-discretionary items, what's going to happen then? Are we going to see an actual real pullback in spending, an actual real recession? Because I think that's where we are right now. Um, looks like we could probably spend another video or two on this subject. <laughs> right. Yeah. By the way, everyone, if you want to see that video, the three of us will be love to just get on here and talk about the economy and, and all that stuff. So if you want that, uh, we'll deliver it to oh. you. Just leave it in the comments. Oh, absolutely. That, you, you let us we, know because we want to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we there need to go. know that you want us to do it. Hey, let's talk we about- We may need to do week. that a little closer to five o'clock, Don. I mean, yeah, there even better. Go. Let's talk about uh, the winners that we did see come in. Uh, I mentioned Walmart earlier, Thomas. Uh, you wrote a piece on them, uh, compared it to Target. Actually, a, a well-read, uh, well-liked uh piece on on marketbeat.com i'll leave a link down below for that one tell me what you saw there and 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 the shift that you're starting to see right so so walmart is clearly the winner in retail its size and its scope mean that it's everywhere and it has more of what people want it's also got better prices and compared to target it's got a much heavier um uh, percentage of grocery sales all right so Walmart produced growth, outperformed and raised guidance where Target was mixed and lowered its guidance. Target is losing share to Walmart. Walmart's winning. I wouldn't be surprised to see Target shares implode and, and shed a few more um, uh, you know, pr- price handles. I mean, that's, 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 that's coming. Target's losing to Walmart. Walmart's winning out. But within Walmart's numbers, it's pointing to things like um, you know, off-price retailers being big. TGX also is a winner. Their results were also be- to beat and to grow and to raise. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ross stores was the same. I think Coles will be the same this coming up week. Chris, I, would you I, go ahead? Yeah, I agree with Thomas. Yeah, I mean, Walmart's, it's a retail giant. And the thing with Walmart is historically, they always do the best when the economy is the weakest. I mean, mm-hmm. it not only is, does it have the pricing power like Thomas alluded to, but it's made the investment in digital technology. And, you know, uh, their buy online and pick up at store, Bopus, that business is is taking off right now. Uh, I heard a statistic this week that said that's like one of the primary drivers of the business is people that order online and just pick up and then they have the deliveries put in their cart or put in their trunk when they get to the store and off they go. I mean, as you were saying, I might still prefer Costco as an overall stock, but we talk about them enough. This is about this week, and I Walmart's the big winner. Yeah, but wow. Walmart is also Sam's Club. So if you love Costco, yeah. you got to love Walmart too, because you got Sam's Absolutely. right there. Yep. Uh, Thomas, you, we talked about Target a little bit earlier, and I want to get into some of the, the quote unquote losers uh, in retail right now. You said Tom uh, the Target uh, could even go lower, which is mind blowing to me because it fell off a cliff. I don't know sometime yeah. in May, and it yeah, and and I I thought it was at the bottom. Maybe it's not. But what else do we have out there in the way of of retail that it's kind of disappointing right now? I'm not going to call them losers because their yeah. stores are still open, but you know, disappointing. What do you got? Well, Home Depot to me was pretty disappointing. I mean, they they contracted and they had mixed results. Um, posted some strength on the bottom line, right? But they just reaffirmed guidance for the year. So that means their strength has already been seen. 
second half will be weaker than expected. And I think that we're going to see a lot of that from a lot of the, the pure discretionary names. So like winners are going to be non-discretionary players and off-price retailers, but the pure discretionary names are going to suffer. Um, like Foot Locker is coming up this week with this earnings report. It was horrible last quarter. And I don't mm -hmm. expect anything different this quarter because, I mean, Foot Locker, they sell other people's product and other people are lending into to DTC and digital to boost their margins and their sales mm -hmm. and consumers are pulling back. So Foot Locker is going to be a loser twice over, I think. Um, you feel like, I'll just, I'll, let me say this real quick uh, and I'll get back to you, Chris. Uh, do you feel like uh, Home Depot is going to be behind low, be behind Lowe's yet again? Yeah, uh, Home Depot. Um, I, I think honestly it will because Lowe's presents a better value, um, and it's got a better exposure to the DIY and the consumer market. And so people pulling back on those big tickets and on building and buying houses, uh, Lowe's is the one that will will benefit in that in that scenario. Chris, you've done uh, yeah. more than one video, I think, uh, with Lacey on on, on Target. Sure. Uh, <laughs> and both of you are big fans of Target, and we have many uh, fans of Target at Market Beat itself. Uh, but um, tell me a little bit about what you think. Do you think it's fair value at this <laughs> point? Do you think uh, it's a buying opportunity? Is it more or less just let's just let the dust settle? Um, I don't think it's a buy opportunity. I think there's a lot of dust that has to settle yet. What I find interesting about two of the stocks Thomas talked about, tar Target and Home Depot, um, you know, these were two of the the companies that were, you know, the omni-channel darlings of mm -hmm. 2020 and 2021. And now they're struggling. And I think it just goes to show you that when the economy gets tough, you know, having that tech only gets you so far. I mean, the, the target stock price started falling for reasons that we don't need to get into here. Um, but I think it did expose the fact that there was underlying problems in the business. And that's what's showing up in the last two earnings reports. They can't, you know, the, the initial problems that might have led to the initial drop in the stock, those will fade in time. But mm -hmm. it's revealed the fact that there were some problems in the underlying business. And I think... The stock is trying to get properly valued, but I don't think it's there yet. I don't, I certainly don't think it's a buy yet. And I think, you know, Home Depot, as Thomas said, it's been lagging behind Lowe's all year and it's been sort of a head scratcher for me. I'm like, Lowe's is doing pretty well and Home Depot is just not, right, doesn't seem yeah. to be able to get out of its own way. It, yeah. It's, uh, I Home think Depot Target, has had, the... Target had a lot of inventory issues uh, earlier right. this year uh, that, that played into uh, right. Poor report, yeah. one right after another. Um, I'm going to ask you about a stock, Chris, that uh, we yeah. may have talked about before, uh, because it's a store that I really like, and it's a product that I really like. Uh, Skechers, uh, yeah, another another retail place. Um, uh, you know, if you have never tried on those slip-on shoes, you got to try them. They're, they're just incredible. Tell me what you see Skecher, as, as Skechers as far as being kind of a winner going forward. Well, you're a good setup, man, because you know that I was writing about Skechers. It was one of my undervalued mid caps I was writing about this week. Um, I'm going to keep be keeping my eye on it. It's As you were noting earlier, this is more of an e-commerce play. It's not a brick and mortar. But what's interesting to me about it is the brand is affordable. It's stylish. Um, and it seems to be hitting that sweet spot where the kids seem to like it and the adults love the slip on design. It's comfortable, especially when you're getting a little older, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's more comfortable for your feet. And it's one of those companies that could be a sneaky winner here because it's really hitting that sweet spot of, it's certainly a discretionary purchase, but it's a discretionary purchase that is infinitely more affordable than other footwear companies are. I'll tell you one thing that I do like about it, Chris, and now that you mentioned it, I'm going to read, read your articles and stuff. Um, Skechers uh, promotes a lot of their products and other discount shoe stores. Uh, mm -hmm. Famous footwear. I don't know if you guys have that up there. We have lots of them down here. Um, rack room shoes. You, you see Skechers products everywhere you go mm -hmm. right. at discounted prices. Yep. Now, we have, where I live, two or three Skechers uh traditional brick and mortar stores 
but your point taking about uh, the e-commerce is, is strong. Uh, just looks like something to, like you said, just kind of keep an eye on. There you go, guys. There's a look at the retail numbers as, as we saw them, as we reported on them and what we think is going to happen. We thank you for being here and tuning in today. Uh, if this video did any give you any help at all uh, in, in the stock market or whether or not you're in the retail sector or not, we'd appreciate uh, a thumbs up and perhaps a subscribe if we've earned that. But until next time, we'll, we'll talk to you later. Thank you.